Hey guys, I wanted to make another video about the love of God, but also the fear of God. I see a bunch of different groups, I don't know if you want to call them cults or sects or whatever you want to call them, that paint the Father in this very harsh image, and they don't understand that God is love. And that's the, the biggest thing I wanted you guys to take away from this, that God is love, and we have an example of what love is. I mean, we have it painted throughout the gospel, but we also have it here in 1 Corinthians 13. And I'll read this here in a minute, but I want to address that there is proper fear, but that the fear of God is to depart from evil. It's to hate evil, to fear evil, because you know there is a good God. So you to, to know that God is good, you have to know that he despises evil. I heard Paul Washer, and I don't recommend Paul Washer to anyone, really, because he's a Lord's Salvationist. But he, he, he did make a point one time. He said, the most terrifying thing is knowing God is good. And that shouldn't be terrifying. That should, But the point he was trying to make in that was that you know that there will be justice and that there is a, a spot for fear. But the point is, is that's not to those who are in Christ Jesus. That's to the world and those who do not believe. Yes, they should fear, but those who are in Christ Jesus should not be afraid. And I'm going to prove that to you over and over again, that they use verses that are meant for unbelievers to the church. And then they it, it creates fear and doubt and which leads to nothing good. We, we want boldness, and we want people to speak out. We want people to love each other, because that's really what Christ told us to do. That was a command, to love one another. People will know you're my disciples by the love you have for one another. So let's go ahead and read. I'm not going to read all of this. I'm just going to read down to verse 7, and then you can read the rest if you want. Um, but yeah, this is what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 13, the excellence of love. If I, speak, if I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I have become a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all the mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I surrender my body to be burned, but do not have love, it profits me nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not jealous. It does not brag. It is, and is not arrogant. It does not act unbecomingly, it does not seek its own, it is not provoked, it does not take into account wrong suffered, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And then it goes on to say, love never fails. And it talks about the gifts, but the greatest gift is love. So, we know what love is. And one thing I want to stress out to people who are struggling with sin, or struggling with God's forgiveness, thinking that God's going to punish them or hates them for their sin... Love takes no love takes into account no wrong suffered, which means love does not remember what you do. It, it, it doesn't hold grudges, and God's not holding a grudge against you for your sin. For one, he, he poured that out on Christ, but two, that's just the nature of him. He always was merciful to those to the evil. He, he always was, but even more so now that we have Christ who has taken our punishment for us. And, you know, I see so many people that, that they use fear to try to make you love God more. But that's... We, we love God more because He loved us. I'm going to go to... Um, where's first? First John, okay. This explains it really. There is no fear in love. Instead, perfect love drives out fear because fear involves punishment. So the one who fears has not reached perfection in love. Okay. We... if. Fear involves punishment, and Jesus Christ has taken our punishment on the cross. Why are people using fear? I mean, it's a question that I, I, I really don't understand. If you believe the gospel, you're saved. If you're saved and you believe Christ has taken your punishment, then why are you fearing? Why are you trying to use fear in the church to get people to do good works? Shh. It goes into some of the other videos I made, but a good work, the very first video I made actually, where a good work should cannot come out of fear because then that's not a good work. A good work comes out of love. Like if, if you do something, if you do an action, you know, out of fear, even if it's a good action like, okay, you give somebody something. If it's out of fear, it's not good. That would be like if somebody points a gun at you and wants to rob you. And out of fear, you hand them your money. That's not a good work. You're, you're, I mean, it, to give them money, you're getting robbed. 
You know, it's not a, I wouldn't call it a bad work, but it, it means nothing because it's done out of fear. We don't consider those who have been robbed doing good works to the criminals. Like, it's just, that's kind of how I, I see that, and I believe that's the spirit of truth has led me to that. And if you disagree, let me know, but I, I, I think that's a good analogy to make. Um, but also, it just goes completely against the nature of God. And I want to read something about how peace strengthens people. The, the fear goes against the nature of God, and it hurts the church. It hurts the person listening to it, and it doesn't empower them to do good. It doesn't strengthen them. It doesn't help them in any way. And most people know this, but we we end up, and I, I'm guilty of it too, using fear sometimes trying to get my point across, but it never empowers the person to step out and do anything better. And I'm going to show that. So I, I also wanted to point out something here. This is, um, well, this is John 14, 27. It's John 29. This is basic verse about peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives to you, do I give you. Do not let your heart be troubled, do not be fearful. Of course, this is do not be fearful. So he's speaking to the disciples at this point, right before he was crucified, and he was leaving them, leaving them their peace. If we are in Christ, we should not be fearful. And right here is also just going against the whole use of fear, the whole point I was trying to make before. But I, I, I'm going to close this now because I really don't need that. I don't need that either. But I'm going to go to... Okay, this is after the resurrection. So Jesus among his disciples. So when, it, so when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and when the doors were shut where the disciples were, where the disciples were, for the, for the fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. See, when fear was there, because the Jews were afraid of the the disciples were afraid of the Jews he came and spoke peace with you and I looked up where else did this phrase peace be with you where else was it used and I, I found it cool that it was here in Daniel and I haven't gone back and read the Greek I don't know if it's exactly the same in the Greek I hope it is or the Hebrew I mean I don't know if it means the exact same thing but I, I hope it does and it says, he, he said, O man of high esteem, do not be afraid. Peace be with you. The same thing. Take courage and be courageous. Now, as soon as he spoke to me, I received strength and said, My Lord, may my Lord speak, for you have strengthened me. So see, when you speak peace, when you speak love, when you speak these things that are not fear, they strengthen the church. And this is a basic teaching. Like you, you should be like, most people be like, well, duh. Like, of course, when you speak well to someone like that, it's going to strengthen them. But then why do we not do this? Why are there so many who speak fear thinking that it's going to strengthen them? I, I can't answer these questions, but I know that it's not of God. We, speaking fear does not give you strength. Now, of course, he, this is speaking of more supernatural strength also. But if we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in us, can we not speak strength into people? The Lord said He gives us His gifts, and we can do what He can do. So, if we believe in Him with the Holy Spirit, if it's according to His will, of course, but if, we can, if He can speak strength into people, we should be able to speak strength into people. But if we have the Holy Spirit and we speak fear into people, then why? this would be a great reason why we see so much defeat in the church. I know there are some really extreme churches like the Westboro Baptist Church that I don't even want to get into that. I might do a video on each of these little groups later. I've not really felt like I need to expose people. I, I don't like exposed videos, but there are some people that go way too far. But I think that I do want to point out the spirit and the movement of these things. I don't have to name names to attack the movement and to attack the false teaching that's going around. And it's not just Westboro Baptist. It's a bunch of other... It can be your local church down the road where speaking fear into you and expecting you to be strengthened. It's the exact opposite of what God does. But then they also, on top of that, teach that that's what God does, which is try to make you fearful so you'll serve Him, which is the enemy. The enemy is the one who wants you to fear and brings condemnation against you and brings doubt against you. Somebody once said that if something keeps coming up that you've already believed and you've 
you've completely believed it, and then you, you've gotten rid of all the doubt, and then the doubt comes back, and then you completely get rid of the doubt, then the doubt comes back, and then this happens multiple times, it's a spiritual attack. It's not from, you know, it's from the enemy. It's not from you. It's not you doubting. The, the enemy's speaking to you. And I, be, and I believe that because there's plenty of times where you know something to be true, but you keep doubting. You know it to be true, you keep doubting. It could be anything. A lot of people, they don't realize this, and this is how you, I think you get like a lot of OCD disorders, where you get a lot of, you know, mental disorders where people like, they're afraid their car's going to break down. Then they're afraid their car's going to break down. And they know it's not. They have it checked every week, but it, it keeps happening. This, th these feelings and this like fear and this doubt and th that is spiritual attack. And when I believe the point I'm trying to make is, is when you open up people to fear, you open them up to spiritual attack. We need to strengthen people. We have a spirit of boldness, not a spirit of fear. And I don't know. You can argue that, well, you need to use fear for people in the world. But Jesus didn't come to them like that. Jesus, when he was in the midst of the world, was kind to them. Now, you had a repentance message with some fear in it from John the Baptist before Christ. But the, the difference was Christ was in the midst of them speaking mercy. John was in the wilderness, and he had some repentance, which brings fear of you not repenting and you know dying in your sin. But he was in the wilderness. So the point I'm trying to make is when you're drawing close to somebody, do not use fear. Even when, you know, fear was used, it was used in the wilderness and the people came to John, the ones who wanted to. When Christ was in the midst of people, he used compassion and mercy. And the only ones he spoke harsh to were the self-righteous Pharisees. So I, I just see this fear teaching this use of fear to try to get people to do good or to love God more but I, you know it, it, it's not true repentance it's not true heart change it's it's not true good to make somebody do something out of fear that's just power and control and maybe some of these you know t people are false teachers just wanting to exert power and control i know there's a lot of organizations that do that I'm not going to name names, but you can probably think of some. But if they do that, if we, if you know those organizations, you can think of one. Use fear in the wrong way, but yet you turn around and your organization or you or somebody you know, you're associated with uses fear in the wrong way, you're not any better. I, I do think a fear should come to those who are in the world but can we actually make them fear because if they just don't believe then they, then you just sound like an idiot to them and you know they will be punished for you know mocking and not believing but I, I just don't think fear is the way to go unless the Holy Spirit leads you into it and it's not the way to go in the church we were never told even with somebody sinning as we see in uh, Corinthians he was never said, go make him feel fearful. It was said, just don't have anything to do with him until he repents. You know, you go to somebody and, and you don't want to them to love out of fear. That just doesn't make sense. It's like order out of chaos. It's the it's honestly the new world order, the new age, what do you call it, philosophy. It's a, there was the cloud, cloud and piven strategy, you have topsy-turvy, ups, you know, turning things on their head, order out of chaos, love out of fear. It doesn't make sense. You get love from love and fear from fear. Now, there is chastisement, but I'm speaking of a different level between, you know, being serious with somebody and taking it seriously and then using fear. And I think if you pray and seek the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit will come and he'll let you discern which is correcting and caring and which is you just using trying to use fear to control someone and I think we've all done that you know especially when you become a new babe in Christ I remember when I first became a new Christian I try to use fear on some of my family members but it, it never works we speak love and 
you can speak concerningly and you can use verses that are true but know the situation and don't use fear as a way to try to manipulate people because even if you get this the, the result you want and they you know it's not actually going to be a heart change for the right reason it's not going to be done out of love they're not going to change their mind because of they love the lord they're going to change their mind it's not they're not going to change their mind because they believe the lord's right they're just going to change their mind because they they don't want to go to hell and we i'm trying to speak deeply about these things i don't know sometimes i i don't do a great job but I hope this was understandable, and I hope this, you know, can reach some people. But you guys, let me know in the comments below if I need to change anything. Or, all right, you guys, take care. That's about it.